Hi, uh, this is Tina. I'm Tack, and we are sisters, and we are the Greek bitches in the kitchen. If you are tuning back from the first video, thank you for coming back. We can't believe you actually came back, but <laughs> and did you tell your friend and give them a dollar? But anyway, so today we're gonna make a pan seared cod and a white wine tomato basil sauce. Tomato basil. <laughs> tomato basil. Tomato basil. <laughs> and this recipe is by Baker by Nature. And I'll have the website and this particular recipe in the link below, you know, in the description box. So we're going to start with this, and we're also going to make the broccoli, and a roasted broccoli, and we're going to do the fish first, and we're going to do it in sections the way that it is listed. So for the white wine tomato basil sauce, it's two tablespoons olive oil, a half teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, which we are using red pepper flakes, one, because I forgot it. Again, and besides that, I do like cayenne pepper flavor better. I mean, they both give heat, but I just like the smokiness of cayenne pepper better. Um, two large garlic cloves or three small ones, finely minced. One pint of cherry tomatoes, sliced in half. Oh, I didn't do that. <laughs> okay, uh, we might cut them in half, I don't know. One fourth cup dry white wine, which we got some Pinot Grigio, um, and I will link like, well, I won't. <laughs> well, you know, I was gonna get is that a, a dry wine. It is a dry wine. Okay. I was gonna get a different dry wine, but I asked Evie what they what you guys would actually drink because once you open it, you know, you don't, you know. So I don't want to turn to vinegar. Should be drank, drunk. How do you say it? Devoured. It should be. <laughs> <laughs> it should be devoured. You know, sooner than later. Two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, one teaspoon of fresh lemon zest, half teaspoon of salt or more to taste, one fourth teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper or more to taste. Okay, so we're gonna go into this. Um, basically, I'm gonna start by zesting my lemon and yeah, rinse it, clean it off. And there, I'm gonna tell you, like, there's if you don't have like one of these fabulous, which I don't, zesters. Which she does. I love this thing, and I think everybody should have it. Could you use it for nutmeg, zesting, chocolates, um, lots but of. But can't you use just a grater? You can use a grater, but you can also use a peeler and just peel the um, the peel. This is a preferably a sharp one. Yeah, use a sharp one. Nothing is as <laughs> sharp as we got. Okay. So use your zester. I'm gonna. Well, I mean, most people might not have one. Okay. So if you have one of these or a grater, you can use a grater, but you can use this because it definitely keeps it thinner without getting a lot of the white. And then line up your shreds, and then you can cut them up, you know, really, really fine. And this, you have to make sure your knife is sharp. And this is the only one that is super, super sharp because I hide it in the back of the drawer, <laughs> so it doesn't get used as a tool. As, yeah. As a saw. As a saw. So just, you know, chop it up. So anyway, um, you can do that if you don't have a fine zester. But I definitely say, because I, I want more lemon, because we're making a lot. Um, but I definitely say, if you can, oh, no, the kitchen smells good, get you a zester, because you'll use it for just so many different things. And it's great to grate ginger. For people that are doing like the ginger See, water. yeah, I'm more of a open a bottle. You are an open a bottle, and I am not. Yeah. Okay, so I'm taking the zest off this entire lemon because I love it. All right, so we have the zest. It smells so good. It smells so good. This is the lemon I'm going to use for my juice, and so you, you know, nothing goes to waste. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna heat oil in a large saute pan over medium high heat. We're gonna use a skillet because this, now there's two things about this. One, you want a pan that you can use that'll go from the stove top to the oven because you're gonna cook it in the oven at 375 at the end for like five minutes. So it might not even be worth your time for that, but you can finish it in the pan. You can cover it and let it you know, finish for like five minutes. 
Okay, we need a lesson on how to work the stove because I can never get the thing lit. Okay, if you have, if you're at a friend's <laughs> house, or at your mother's house, you hear that? That it's light. Not, it's a, you have to, oh, it's the, oh, back, it's the one. back one. That's And why. make sure you <laughs> get the right eye. All right. So we have our oil going. We're gonna add. Okay, but it's not actually going. Do you, now, do you heat your pan and then put your oil, or do you put your oil while your pan's heating? I it depends on what I'm making. I don't know if I'm making steak in the skillet and I want to blacken it. I get that skillet smoking hot, like hot, 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 and then I add a high heat oil. But because we're using olive oil, which is not a high heat oil, I don't let it. I don't let it get really hot like that. I get let, I let it all warm up together because... So you want the oil in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, just coat the pan? Just yeah, it's supposed to be two tablespoons, so just go around twice. Okay. <clears throat> now we'll add uh, the crushed red pepper flakes. Now the reason why you would do that, we're not doing that though, the reason why you would do that is because it sweats your herbs. Like anytime you use a dried herb, it's good to like heat it like that and it sweats it and gets all the oils out and the flavors like really like, get in there nice. But I'm using powdered cayenne. cayenne pepper and so I'm going to add it a little bit toward the end just because I don't need to pull the oil out of powder. Um, we're going to saute the garlic for one minute and it's going to be two so we're going to use a tablespoon of that. I saute for one minute until garlic is fragrant. Add the cherry tomatoes and cook stirring occasionally until they're soft and blistered. But still hold their shape, which is nine to twelve minutes. Now, you can cut them in half and do it when you cut them in half. Of course, the heat, if you like your tomatoes cooked down a little bit more, um, that's good. I just like to roast the whole thing, and I like when I bite into a tomato that it's really nice and juicy. So, out of my preference, I'm keeping them whole. Everything else is the same, but I'm keeping them whole. Okay. All right, now add the tomatoes. All of them. Uh huh. <clears throat> okay, so that's going to go for 9 to 12 minutes. I was told that tomatoes are a... Is it a ghost? Is it called a ghost food? A ghost? A nightshade or something? Yeah, that's it! Good job. Okay. <laughs> and then, oh, so let me get another thing. Too. Okay, so it's supposed to be a nightshade uh, fruit. Uh, fruit. Fruit. Now, apparently, you know, tomatoes are supposed to be good for you. I love them, and they're supposed to even be better for you for the antioxidants when you uh, cook them. It's supposed to be even better. Okay, so apparently this is a nightshade food, and so what it does is when somebody's holding their arm out, like, this this will, like, kill your resistance. Okay, hold your arm out. Like, and now I'm going to press on it, and you need to, like, resist me as much as you can, okay? I sh just, like, really resist me. Okay, now hold that. I know, and everybody, we did this at the grocery store. Wait, do this again. Yeah, we did it at the grocery store. Now, I swear to God, you guys need to try this. Like, do it to, do it at the grocery store to, like, grab somebody and say, hey, I want to try something out. Okay. But I'm going to really concentrate. Okay, now. so apparently, you get somebody to do this, and you want the resistance. Like, they really can't, you know, they really got to okay. fight you. Okay, then, but when they hold a nightshade food, like a tomato, <laughs> They can't raise it. And then wait a minute, I'm testing a theory. I'm gonna hold anything. Okay. But I don't know if that it's a grape, so I don't know. I think grapes Oh it's are a nightshade. Little... Yeah. Why? No. <laughs> well grapes are I mean yeah, like any okay, there you go. That's a pepper. Put the garlic. Yeah, try the garlic. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Some about the nightshade food, and then they say like it's not nightshade okay, food are nice. not the best thing for you, but it's like I honestly you gotta pick and choose. But I guess like it's like tuna. Tuna's good for you, but you eat enough of it. It's got mercury. mercury. You're gonna die mercury. So you pick Look. and choose your battles. Okay, so now we are going to add wine. How much? So the wine is supposed to be a half a cup. Okay, well how? Donna, the tomato is supposed to be before you add the wine because I mean these are not like Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is gonna, this uh, white wine is gonna come to a simmer. It's a half cup. We did one cup because we're making we're making more. So we have our basil, our fresh basil, and um, if you want your basil, a couple of things. If you want your basil to keep growing, 
um, make sure you cut it before it flowers. And then if also cut it like right, I don't know if you can see this. Um, you already cut that. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Oh, did I? Yeah. Okay, cut it like at the knot, like right above, like the two small leaves, like right above that knot. I don't know if you can see that. You can't see that. Okay, so like see these knots right here? So you're gonna cut right above it. And what that'll do is, um, if you cut close to that, then it'll start to spread out and it'll keep going. How much Unless for me, was... mine died. Well, I think she let hers bloom too. No, mine didn't bloom. That's why Maybe. I said I didn't know they bloomed. Oh. Mine didn't bloom. It was just getting spriggy, so I cut it back thinking it would spread out and then it died. Yeah, I don't know. A half cup of fresh basil. Okay, so we're going to cut off the stems. See, I'm not normally fond of wine sauces, personally. You really like wine sauces. I'm, I don't know, something about alcohol. I prefer to drink my alcohol. <laughs> Maybe that's it, because I don't drink it. Because you don't drink it. So but I, I like to, to drink it. my alcohol, and I'm not fond of it in my food. There's, well, some, there's some that I can do, but we'll see. At least, we, at least when I cook with alcohol, it is alcohol you can drink. Because honestly, if you can't drink it, you so shouldn't cook with it. Because then you're just cooking this. with some really messed up vinegar type I don't know what that stuff is. All right, so we're gonna do a half cup of this. And I like to use scissors to cut my leaves just because I don't like to bruise them. And I'm gonna cut them, and I'll just show you. Just kinda of like, I cut them in, like, layer the leaves, cut them in half, and then just cut the strips. I love that smell. And a lemon and baby bowl. My kitchen is smelling You know what, amazing. I think I need to make candles. You want to make candles? I want to make a candle that smells like that. You wanted to make wine last week. But we'll make wine and candles. Okay, so here's a half cup. And you, like, I'm just cutting on like that. that so like when that. they will, like you still have, you know, some bite. Alright, so that'll be a minute. So I have a small strainer. You can get these at, you know, or in, almost anywhere. Um, or you can use your hand to catch the seeds. I'm just going to use a strainer. And now we need... Two tablespoons of lemon juice. So, and of course I'm gonna double it because I'm cooking a lot. Can I have a fork, please? Yeah. Thanks. You need one of those. I have one, but I just, I don't know, I just used my fork. Okay, so we have the juice of one lemon, which is two tablespoons, and then we're going to need the zest as well. We added the wine, we stirred it, we allowed the mixture to come to a gentle simmer. Now we're going to stir in the basil, which is one cup, um, two things, two tablespoons of lemon juice. Add basil? Yeah. And then the lemon zest, and then we'll salt and pepper it a little bit, cook it for a couple of minutes, and then set it aside because then we'll work on the cod and we'll bring the sauce back in later. And I'll probably add more basil toward the end just Lemon because juice I too? like the fresh bite of it. Yeah. See, is this gonna get thick at all? Or is this just gonna stay a thin? It's gonna be like a thin. I'm gonna, I mean, I'll probably reduce it a bit because I don't know, I don't know anything about this recipe. I mean, it's it was a big pen and very popular so this is gonna cook down just for a couple of minutes and then we're going to put it in a bowl because I need that skillet back right, so next we are also gonna make a oven roasted broccoli recipe and this recipe comes from a spicy perspective which as well I will have the link to the original source for this uh, recipe at the bottom of the description page okay um, and if you love oven roasted things she does this whole thing on our website with different roasted vegetables. Um, I haven't tried them, but we are going to try this one. Okay, so she roasts this, and, and then it's very simple, just a couple of ingredients, but roasting it brings out kind of its sweetness that broccoli does have. Um, when you roast it, it just really brings out everything. So I love roasted broccoli. Uh, yeah, and I, I love roasted vegetables. So 
We're gonna go ahead and start on this. So we need a baking sheet lined. Baking sheets are over there. You know the rumor of this song? No. I want my MTV. Apparently, one of the guys from Dire Straits <clears throat> was at like Sears or Montgomery Ward, something like that. I think it was Sears. And he was um, in the electrical section where you buy TVs and radios and stuff. And while he was waiting for something, with this other guy, I guess he made a purchase, whatever. Anyway, he overheard a customer watching the TV screens, watching MTV, and the cus the other customer, like whoever was in the store, had said, um, look at them, that's not a job. And it, apparently, this is, like the lyrics of the song is what this guy said, and the guy from Dire Strait was there listening to this and wrote a song about it, and this is oh apparently how this song came about. So, yeah, so if you're on Jeopardy. Anymore, do, they? do they even have Jeopardy anymore? What? MTV. Yeah, but it's like reality shows. It's not music. They shouldn't even call it MTV. Now, the broccoli is supposed to be trimmed into bite-sized florets. Um, I like my broccoli like you when I roast it, it. I cut it in half. I cut the I cut the things in florets, and I like doing it. I just like it doing it like that. Um, but normally you're supposed to do it like you See, cut. I cut everything. the flower. Right, I do. That's what I do. Would you prefer that? I don't care. I mean, because this will soften and roast with it, and there's like so much nutrients and sugar. I mean, that. that's fine. I'll, I'll eat it. Are I you mean, sure? Yeah. Okay. But I would cut off the stem. Yeah, she would, and um, but she would also open up a can just as easily. Would so open she's, up a can. you know, a normal person. Um, so yeah, you could cut off that and then just have the florets. Um, and we're not going to have room for all this broccoli? No, I, I got like a lot, a lot of broccoli. Now, we don't have to do the whole thing. I, mean, I can roast more tomorrow. Okay. So, this is... Alright, so this is how we're roasting it. Now, all we need for this particular dish is some olive oil, um, salt and pepper, garlic powder, and that's it. Pretty easy. Okay. So we preheated the oven to 450, drizzle the oil over the tops, and then sprinkle with a fourth teaspoon of garlic powder. Or just sprinkle garlic powder. Yeah, well, it, it oh, now here's the thing. It calls for one fourth teaspoon. One thing about being Greek is um, a fourth teaspoon of garlic just isn't enough. Now, for people that good are, huh? Good moisture, yeah. Okay, so for people that, you know, just like normal, right, like normal food, one fourth thing, a tea, uh, one fourth teaspoon of garlic, you just sprinkle it on, just enough garlic. We like a lot of garlic, so we're gonna like really coat, like shake this with garlic. So do you and need so, more oil? No. Okay. And, um. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sprinkle the garlic powder. Yeah, on. she's gonna sprinkle it just the way that we would normally do it at home. But again, it's, you know, it's this, we're not altering it, like we're not adding anything, we're not changing anything, but we're just adding a little bit more just because that's our taste. And then like, of course, you know, you're at home, you don't like garlic, don't use it at all. You like a little bit of garlic, just use a fourth teaspoon. If you're Greek, you know what to do, Greekers. So, um, it's really good with Parmesan, of course, yeah. And she loves Parmesan, so she's, like, the last thing that we did, you know, she put Parmesan on that one, and she put Parmesan on this, if you want to add. But we're not adding. We're going to try to stick to this as true as possible. Okay. Ready to go in the oven? Yeah. So we'll go ahead and pop that into the oven, and we're going to... Oh, you're supposed to toss it to coat well. Okay, but these are not flowerette. Oh, yeah, it's not flowerette, so we, we're good. All right, but you would toss it... After you do it, while it's in the... So I feel like maybe it should be a little more oil sprinkled on it, but... Do you want to put more oil on it? Okay, so you're going to add... Cute. Isn't it? Get it? You know what that is? So Basil oil. Okay, Get it? Basil? Got it. Got it. Okay. So, sprinkle the oil on it, and then you'll okay. toss it. You do your salt and pepper, your garlic, but okay. because we did big, we're not tossing it. We're going to just roast it. Okay, so the broccoli's been in for about 15 minutes, and it's nice and roasted, and so now we're going to do the cut. We're going to heat oil in a large saute pan over medium heat. We're going to season both sides of the fish with salt and pepper, and then we're going to place the cut 
into the oil, cook golden brown about five minutes, carefully flip the cat over, and then place the pan in the oven to continue to cook for another like five minutes or until it's cooked through. And um, 375. It's gotta come down. Okay, so we're gonna salt and pepper the fish, which she's gonna do. That's a lot of salt. Oh, yeah. don't, no, don't salt the other side. Pepper? Yeah. You put so much salt on that. It didn't look like a lot of salt. We have um, the fish and the pan, salt and peppered on both sides, and now we're um, searing, you know, side A right now, and we'll get to side B in a second. So here's the thing. So on this sauce, at the end, after you pull it out of the oven, you put it on and serve it immediately. Now, here's the deal. Before I put this on the fish, I want to make sure that the sauce, that I like it, because we got to eat it. So. As the sauce is, as is, we're gonna try it and let you know how we like the sauce. Cheers. All right. Not so much. This sauce, I feel like, I mean, it tastes, it tastes just like the ingredients. Like, it tastes like it has tomato, it tastes like it has basil, it tastes like it has wine, it tastes like it has lemon. Which is great, because it's going on fish. The thing of it is, though, bless you. <laughs> Pepper? The thing of it is, I like more flavor when I do a sauce. Especially with the wine sauce. Um, I feel like when you're cooking with wine, you really need to have some kind of a stock. To kind of give it a little bit more depth. Now, I'm going to add the cayenne pepper into this because I like the warmth taste of cayenne pepper and it'll add a little bit of heat versus, you know, the chili fakes that are really supposed to go in it, which that's not going to change the flavor. It just adds the heat. Now, as far as the flavor, if you like it like this, I say go for it. However, if you make your sauce just like the recipe and you are like us where you feel it needs just a little bit more, Add broth. Now you can use a vegetable broth, you can use a chicken broth because it's fish, I wouldn't use beef. We're gonna go ahead and just soup it up really quick. Now, you can use like a, uh, like a chicken bouillon cube, which most people have in their house. I like the granular chicken if I'm gonna do something quick because it, I, it just it incorporates a lot quicker and easier. Unless you're one of those people that actually have um, a bouillon base, you know, like the bouillon base that chefs use. Um, usually we make them ourselves or you can get them like in a thing already made and it's thicker. And that would be like amazing. But most people don't have those and keep those on stock. So chicken granulars. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to like kick this up a little bit. Transfer the skillet, we flipped the fish, now we're gonna put it into the oven to finish cooking. putting it on the top shelf you can put it on the middle shelf I like to put it on the top because it is fish so now we're going to kick up the sauce a little bit shake it in actually do half of that so do one teaspoon and then just mix it in and put it on the stove and reduce it so basically you're gonna cook it down a little bit um, and let this really let the wine reduce and then, um, and let everything kind of incorporate. And when the wine reduces with the tomatoes, the tomatoes will start to roast a little bit as well and bring out some of the sugars that are in the tomato. I say, you know, make it just like it is and then try it and then alter it because you might actually like the way it is written. Because a lot of people like that whiny taste. That whiny, yeah. And I love... But I, I, I have to have... Some Sustenance. type of bite yeah. to all my sauces. Yeah. I don't like like a bland whiny or anything. It's got to have some type of bite. Yeah. And I, I'm the same way. Because, I mean, and I'm all about wine. I mean, like, my baking stuff, like, I'm not, like, it's all alcohol. Like, I don't cook without alcohol. Except for maybe a couple of people just because um, it's just a special thing. But other than that, I mean, I'm all about cooking with alcohol in every dish. Um, so, but this just feels like it needs 
more. more. So, again, do the sauce the way it's written. Try it. And then if you feel like you need to add a little bit more, add the one chicken broth cube or with a bouillon cube, one bouillon cube or uh, just one teaspoon of the instant shaky bouillon. So and you can get that in the in the Latin section of your grocery store, and it's you know really inexpensive. Or you can just get it where you get chicken bouillon. Yeah, but it's the shaky stuff isn't always there. You, yeah, you have the powder. It's in powder form or cube. Oh, okay. Sometimes it's cheaper. Okay. Just Don't be so exotic. <laughs> no, it's not that, but it could be. I mean, it depends on the brand, but like that, it's all this. Same. I mean, it's instant bouillon. It's not like it's like some chef Yeah, special. you just don't have to go to a special section. Wherever you buy bouillon, you can buy the bouillon. Yeah. The shape, the granules too. Get the granulars. Okay. And then just uh, incorporate it. And then re let when you're doing it with the chicken broth, or you know, if you add the chicken to it, then saucepan, medium heat, on a flame. If you're working with an electric stove, don't go to medium. Don't quite get to medium. Say it like number four. And let it stay there to see what it does, and then go to like number five. But I wouldn't get to number six. I would say at number five. Um, but electric stoves. If you're, I'm sorry if you're working on an electric stove. She's got one. I hate it. I hate it. They're hard because you can't, can't keep control temperature. The temperature. I cannot control the temperature. So this is coming to like a a high simmer, not a boil, but a high simmer. Okay, so we've got the sauce going and it has reduced a little bit. We don't want it to be too reduced because we do want it to be, you know, wet to put on the fish because this is gonna be basically in replace of like squeezing a lemon over it, you're gonna use this sauce. Of course, you could add more lemon, but you do want this to be, you know, a little tart because it's, again, it's gonna, it's supposed to replace the lemon in your fish. Okay, I'm gonna add the cayenne pepper now. Um, to give it a little bit of heat, let it cook just for a few minutes, and then we're gonna taste it and see how it is. Okay, now I added um, a little less than a fourth of a teaspoon of the cayenne pepper. Just I just wanna give it some heat, and I wanna give it a little bit of warmth, and that's it. And we're going to put our broccoli back in to the oven with the fish. We let it finish cooking and keep it warm. Now we are going to check our sauce. Yeah, that's better. Much better. Okay. So Diane actually made a difference. It makes a small difference. It gives that it warm. That, yeah. But see, um, pepper flakes won't give it that depth like mm -hmm. that. Because like good. nutmeg, like all those things give it a nice depth. Um, pe the pepper flakes won't just give it like heat. So the cayenne pepper, we added, again, just half of a teaspoon just to give it a little bit of warmth. And it's, it's not spicy. Now, if you like spicy, by all means, go to town. But I just like the warmth of cayenne pepper. And it gives it... Until you try it like that, like you'll understand like that feel, that warmth that it gives. The chicken broth gave it more um, substance. It made it a little, it, gave, it just gave bite, it more bite. more bite. So when you put it over the fish, like everything comes together. And again, do the chicken after you do the original recipe, just to make sure it's something that you like yourself. So now I'm gonna turn this off and let it sit while the fish continues to cook and the broccoli finishes up and heats back up as well. So if you like the flavor of your sauce and everything is good to go, um, and then let's say you wanted to, you're like, oh, I like the sauce, but I wish it was creamy. A couple of things you can do at this point is you can add heavy cream, heavy whipping cream to your pan. After you do the chicken stock, you can go ahead and add it at the end if you want to. If you want to do it in the beginning, do it after you add the wine, then add your cream. Um, but you still, if you do the cream, you have to have the stock. Like, cream has to have some kind of stock or it really starts diluting it and just, it's, cream is heavy. So it, it absorbs like a lot of whatever's happening. The bouillon. Yeah. What'd I say? 
stock, but I mean, oh, a lot yeah, of people the, when you say stock, you're thinking the liquid, the bouillon. Yeah, the bouillon. So um, after you add your chicken flavor or your vegetable flavor, whatever you choose, if you're you know a vegetarian, um, then do the heavy cream. If you're a vegan, you won't be eating fish. But if you're pretty... <laughs> You're going to eat the tomatoes. If you're going to put it over, like, would you put it over tofu? What would you do if you're vegan? I, I don't know. I'm not vegan. Okay, so if you're a vegan and you have something that you would put this over. Tofu? Leave it, maybe tofu. Put it in the description box. We don't know because we're Greek and we, we don't. We, we can't eat meat. meat. We eat meat. But, um, but it would be great to know for, like, people that want to have options. Um, and then don't use, obviously, the heavy cream, I guess. Use one of those um, uh, nut waters and then um you know like almond milk and stuff okay i drink almond milk yeah i don't drink it but i use it on my cereal i guess you could use like those nut milks i don't know i've never used it in cooking i haven't used it in cooking oh you could use coconut no well you could try coconut okay i'm not gonna promise you with coconut milk but i love coconut i love coconut milk like love coconut milk did you you like i've never tasted no i hate curry (sighs) all right so, oh, I can make a curry. I hate curry. Okay. If you are a vegetarian and you tune into our page and stuck around, could you help, like, help other vegetarians that are sticking around or vegans, vegans, because vegetarians will eat fish and maybe milk, right? I don't know. I don't know what the difference Ve- Okay, so help those that, um, you are the educated one, so help those that are learning that, you don't know. Don't eat meat. That don't eat meat, but would like the sauce. So my thing is, if you like the sauce and you want to make it creamy, use heavy whipping cream, put it in there after, you know, toward the end. You're definitely going to need that stock. You can use vegetable or use chicken. Don't use beef or fish. And then um, if you want it, let it reduce. And if you want, like, more thickness, take some cornstarch, just to, like a tablespoon at a time, and mix it in some of the cream. Let it dissolve and then slowly pour it in until and let it kind of cook and let it do its thing and then you can keep adding to make it thicker. And you'll have a nice thick sauce. Now, if you are somebody that wants to take the time and know they want creamy, no matter what, um, is more familiar with working with cream sauces, make a roux, you know. I was going to say, you could make a roux. A roux is always in. better. I prefer to do a roux than to add an arrow. A roux is really easy to make. For most people. So I prefer to do a roux versus adding a And it's a just oil and flour. That's all it is. Butter and flour. Well, I use oil. Or a fat. A fat and flour is basically what it is. Um, I like the butteriness when you're dealing with fish. Because, so I would use a, a good butter. Let it melt down. Yeah, and butter add your for flour. probably yeah. better. Add your flour. And then you're going to whisk it over like really, really low heat. And if you've melted your butter, you turn your heat off. Add the flour while it's warm and whisk it. And then add your... Um, your wine, your cream, you know, your flavors, whisk it, and you're going to do that a little bit on a more faster. And we might, maybe we'll do that one day, like maybe we'll have an all ship and we'll link it to this video somehow or whatever. And then make the roux and then just do this sauce, but do it in a cream and maybe put it over chicken. Ooh, that'd be good. You know, that's basically how you make, um, like gravy that goes on biscuits, white gravy. Yeah. Oh. Except you add milk to it. You make a roux and you add milk. I made southern biscuits yesterday for Yaya. You made biscuits? Yes. How'd they come out? Quite quite fluffy. Now, I, I've i mastered the biscuit. Yeah, but you've done southern cooking, Lauren. I don't do southern cooking. Yeah. I, so, I was quite proud. So, I made, I made southern biscuits yesterday. It was very simple and um, it came out pretty good. And then I, I made found sausage that, gravy. Did you use milk or buttermilk? I had buttermilk, so I used yeah, sour I, milk. No, I find that milk works better than buttermilk. I didn't do it with milk. I didn't do it with buttermilk, but I made sour milk. And now when I say sour milk, I mean like don't let it sit in the fridge so it goes old and sours. You take one cup, let's say, of milk, and you put like a teaspoon of a white vinegar. You mix it up and you let it sit for five to ten minutes and it sours. Now, it's not thick like buttermilk. No, but it can be used as a substitute yes. if you're out of buttermilk. Yeah, it's a great substitute. It'll it'll do like, you know, it has the acidity, so when you're making like breads and cakes, it gives it that moist and that But I found that, that if I'm out of buttermilk, yeah, I'll just use mayonnaise. Like if I make my cornbread, I usually use buttermilk. Yeah. If I'm out of buttermilk, I will use regular milk and then a bit of mayonnaise. And that gives that 
fatty like the buttermilk has I mean, to make that moist. Mayonnaise is just egg and oil. But it gives that fatty, and it, it with cornbread it works. Now, I don't know about the other stuff, but in cornbread it works. It okay. works pretty well. <clears throat> Give it a try. And we might do it, like, maybe one day we'll do, like, an experimental thing where we just mess with, like, milk. Fats. Yeah, milk and fats, fats. And just, you know, we'll make, like, a bit, we'll do, like, a cornbread. See we'll do, happens. like, a cake. And, yeah, we'll just, we'll just have, like, science in the kitchen day. And we'll, like... Do all of these. Like, oh, okay. So if you have, and so how many hands out? So, <laughs> so if you have, um, like a science kitchen science thing that you want us to do on that, like we'll do it once a month. We we'll have like Science Saturday, and so if you have something that you want us to mess with in the kitchen, put it in the description. Uh, not in the description box because that's for us. Put it in the comment section. And we'll collect it, and then we'll do, like, a, once a month, we'll have, like, Science Saturday, and we'll we'll just play in the kitchen for you, so you don't have to do it. And then we'll tell you, don't do it, or do it. And you see how we cook. You can tell us, those bitches don't know what they're doing. Or you can be like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't do that, or oh, I'm so glad they didn't. See, it could go either way. Toss a coin. All right, we're going to get this food out of the oven. Because I think we might be burning the fish. We're not. Turn the oven off. Oh. I just let it finish. Well, we're ready to go? Yep. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna plate this. That looks good. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna see. Here we go. Uh, we we go. Sure the fish is done. Yeah. It must be good. You're going in. I'm going in. Okay. It is good. It is not bad. Let's try another bite. You gotta take two to really know. I like it. It is. It's good. I like it. It doesn't take over the fish. It's not heavy. Broccoli? <clears throat> is the broccoli not good? No, broccoli could have used a little more. More what? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> broccoli could have used a little more roasting. Could have used a lot more garlic. Alright. The fish is great. Yeah. This recipe is really great. The sauce, I feel like definitely needed the chicken. And, if, and I will say, if it tastes like it's super tangy, in your pot, remember, you're putting it over fish, so you want that acidic, you want that tang. Because once you get it over the fish, it's not gonna, you're not going to taste it like that anymore. Right? You don't yeah. taste it that tangy. It's no, blends it's into good. The fish. It's good. It really brings out, you know, the sweetness and the tomatoes, and it doesn't take over the fish. Like, the fish has flavor without it being like, oh, you taste the sauce. No, that's good. It is good. The broccoli definitely... I um, say with the broccoli, cut it off the stem. <laughs> cut it, cut the flowerets up. Toss it in the oil. Toss it with your salt, pepper, and your garlic, like in a bowl. Uh, yeah, and then get it coated it. really well, and then roast it. We don't have enough of nothing on that, I don't think. No, I mean, it just I mean, but like... I can eat raw broccoli, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, if the broccoli but... tastes just like. Cook broccoli with some salt on it. Now, yeah, the broccoli is bland. But if you just like broccoli, it's not bad. But if you don't like broccoli and you really want something... It needs more. Yeah. Do it exactly like that a recipe that I'm going to link. Like, cut it off, like she said. Do the broccoli in a bowl. Put your... You know, like, really get it saturated. Definitely add more garlic because we add a lot of garlic and you can't taste it. Also, and I maybe use fresh garlic if you're gonna roast it. I wouldn't do the powder. I would do I would do like the that because you put that garlic and it roasts in the oven. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but I I also think had we cut the tomatoes in half, we would have got more of that tomato taste in the sauce, and I think it would have been a little different than had we had. I mean, it's still good. I mean, I would still do it this way also. But if we would have cut the tomatoes in half, I think it would have given it a more, a little more flavor too. Yeah. But 
tomatoes are like so it. sweet though. It's They're good. So roasted. It's good. Yeah. And so, I mean, the broccoli still we could fix. Yeah, I mean, I mean the broccoli is an easy fix. I mean, I like, I mean, it's fine. Like, we'll eat it. Like, we, it's good. It's not that it's not good. It's just not it's, probably what it should have been. Like, it probably didn't turn out. Had I cut it off, had I mixed it in the bowl, you know, had I done it correctly, um, it probably would taste different. But people still will say, follow the, you know, if you follow the recipe, still add more garlic. And it's you're roasting it in the oven, I say use real garlic, not powder. Because when you roast garlic, it's amazing. It tastes so much better, roasted garlic. Although, garlic. yeah, I've never, I've, I've always used the powder, but I've coated it really well, and I've always cut Have the Have you ever had roasted garlic? Like, roasted garlic? No. Oh. Are you serious? No, I haven't. Oh. I have to make you roasted garlic. You'll never be able to go back. But this is good. This is I'd really say good. It's good. So this turned out really great. Um, so far, we haven't really come across a bad recipe. I think, if anything went sour, it was... We're two of two. Yeah. I think it's just because um, I didn't do the broccoli quite right. Um, maybe cut the tomatoes in half like she she said um, to do. Or he, I don't know. But if you don't want to, I mean, this is still really good. I yeah, mean, I like the whole tomato. Like, I like lazy, biting you... into a whole tomato. I like the roast of a tomato. Um, but flavor-wise, maybe cut it, you know, some of, you know, because that'll seep out and it'll get into the sauce. And it will change the sauce for sure. I cook a certain way. So to cook somebody else's recipes, um, this is very interesting for me because I, I'm so particular about things and I like, I mean, like I made ravioli, um, yesterday, yesterday for my mom and I mean, I made my own dough, like I do like from scratch. So, oh, and I buy it in the bag and so then know. I just add a jar of sauce. Yeah. And, I had to can. But this is the first time I've made fish other than salmon. Because it's I've good. always been afraid of fish because I don't know I can't stand a fishy fish and yeah, I you don't never know what, what a fishy, fishy fish. Yeah, I don't know fishes. So but although salmon is a fishy fish, it's the only one I can do that's fishy. But the I guess the way I make it it I mean I'm okay with it. But it's the only fish mm -hmm. I make. Well it's it is a fish, but it's still a milder fish, but it's it this is not a fish. fishy fish to me. This no, is a really mild We made cod. Cod, if you don't know, cod is a very flaky, mild fish. You it's know, a it firmer, a, it's a meatier. It fish. is a meatier fish. It's, it doesn't just fall apart. It's flaky, but it's got some some texture to it. So yes, this is we didn't we didn't make dessert today because um we didn't we just it wasn't in us. So, <laughs> I was going to make, you know, I got apples, I got pastry in there, so I was going to make, like, you know, some kind of a apple. Okay, so next thing. one, we'll just do a dessert. Maybe. Okay, so the we'll next one, we'll, just, we'll do dessert, and we'll uh, link that video on this one, so if you want to do, do dinner and dessert, because we do want to try to do dinner and dessert, but anyway, thank you for tuning in, and we hope that if you try these recipes... You know, let us know, you know, and um, go to the site, you know, comment, let them know that you tried it. You know, we, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy seeing what's out there on the World Wide Web. And again, if you have any suggestions about anything, let us know. If you want to critique us, again, if, you know, we irritate you, we'll get better. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, we hope you enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. We, I get to spend time with my sister and you'll start meeting more of the family and, you know, our People that we consider family will drag them into this uh, whole black hole that we are <laughs> warping into. Have a have a great weekend. It's Saturday for us. So, and do you got any Greek words you want to teach them? Um, let's see. What what was the last one? Chair. Kathisma. Ka Kathisma. Or well, plateau. Plate. Plateau. Plates. And I'm probably pronouncing them completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, because it's been a long time. Yeah, since we, we went were to Greek school, but didn't learn anything. It didn't stick with us. And I know like a handful of words, part of the alphabet. Yeah. Some of the numbers. You know, we could, you know, keep it very. Um, we don't want to offend anybody, so we can. <laughs> so we can like, like if we do a Spanish dish, we'll teach you Spanish, and if we do a French dish, we'll teach you French. And, you know, they may all sound the same. For us, I mean, you I know, know, things get lost in translation. <laughs> really lost. Yeah. But, you know, anyway, thanks for tuning in and have a great weekend. Peace. Oh, damn. Can we turn it up a little? Yeah. I love this song.
Do you remember it? Yes. Did you remind you Chicago? Shell Park. Do you remember? I think your chief on the left hand side. I said. Sing me the music, make me jump.